So today's topic is nutrients and organ health. Those who have the textbook, it's page number 20, page number chapter 23, page 417. If anyone is joining late, please help them out with the page numbers. So we'll start today's session. Four seventeen in both the textbook. So first is the oral health. Oral health can be uh, affected by your systemic nutrients. That is what is inside and what you eat. Okay. What's the st uh, statistics within your body, your calcium levels, phosphorus levels, along with that, what you actually eat, what you actually consume, how you keep your dental hygiene. Okay. These all are affected. Uh, these all affect the oral health. So the mouth is an early indicator of any general health or nutritional status. Like if you have any symptoms like... Uh, uh, you are frequently having oral uh, cav uh, the cavities and uh, dental caries. Teeth, uh, your teeth is getting rotten very uh, quite often. Okay, these are all are a certain suggestions that you may be having too much of sugary food or too much of acidic food in your diet. Okay, so usually these are the uh, key factors that one has to look out uh, look for. Carbohydrates in diet. Too much of carbohydrates. They are fermentable and uh, the frequency of carbohydrates when it increases in your diet, you will have more risk of getting dental caries. Some specific uh, presence of specific biofilm bacteria like S mutants and lactobacilli, okay, they can also create a bad dental hygiene, okay, bad oral health. And you're susceptible to tooth structure mal uh, malocclusion. Mal malocclusion is crowded teeth, okay, it's not in one single line. Uh, teeth are backward and forward, that is malocclusion. Newly of the newly erupted teeth, exposed cementum. Exposed cementum is more painful. Okay, if calcium deposition is not done properly, if your cal if your diet is calcium deficient, you may uh, it may lead to exposed cementum as well. That is a nutritional factor, but there are other factors as well. Certain ki kind of exposed cementums are genetic as well. Okay, absence of fluoride in your drinking water and the, uh, and your uh, rinses that could also lead to fluorine deficiency and that could lead to bad oral hygiene salivary gland hypofunction not able to secrete adequate amount of saliva in terms of quality and quantity poor oral hygiene not not brushing teeth twice a day okay or not being regular with uh, keeping up with your oral hygiene not clear, cleaning the tongue on a regular basis not rinsing your mouth after you have food okay, these are these all are home care practices if it is not followed properly definitely your oral health will be affected okay and other areas uh, in, when it comes to the nutritional aspect, uh, calcification of your enamel of your teeth, deciduous teeth, that deciduous teeth is the milk teeth, okay, which uh, takes, takes place after uh, around four months of age, slowly the child will get the teeth, okay, so that is the milk teeth that is called uh, deciduous teeth. Uh, it takes place from 14 weeks in utero, when the child is within the mother's womb, okay 14 weeks of pregnancy from that point onwards calcification of the child's unborn child's teeth enamel takes place so that's the re that's the reason we, we why we stress more about calcium calcium rich food for pregnant uh in pregnant women as well because not just for the mother's health but also for the cre uh, growing fetal skeletal uh, skeletal system as well as the oral hygiene calcium is required mineralization of permanent dentition permanent dentition means the permanent teeth that comes after the milk teeth are go gone that will take place from birth to around 10 to 15 years because wisdom teeth also has to come down come out okay so this mineralization takes place in the first 15 years of life soon after birth whatever mineralization is taking place that is to prepare your 
uh, calcify your permanent dentition. So during these periods of age group, specifically from uh, in the uh, when the child is within the womb, from that particular time, fourteen weeks, uh, fourteen weeks in utero, uh, that that is during pregnancy. During these periods, uh, when there is a deficiency in calcium, vitamin D, vitamin A, protein or calories, uh, it is seen that is a association with oral defects. Okay, And uh, these deficiencies must be tackled specifically in this age, uh, this, uh, in this age group as well during pregnancy and up to the age of 15 years. So the, the, no individual, child, adolescent, pregnant woman should be deficient under these categories of nutrients, calcium, vitamin D, vitamin A, protein, and energy. Energy requirement is the total energy per day. And uh, we have seen during our vitamin B classes as well, if there is an inadequate intake of vitamin B6, or any B complex vitamins that could lead to high risk of cleft lip, cleft palate formation. Glossitis, that is inflammation of the tongue. Again, it's, uh, it could uh, it could deteriorate your oral hygiene. Glossitis, mucositis, uh, angular stom stomatitis. These all uh, these all symptoms we have seen. We have discussed in detail when we were taking up uh, our vitamin B complex classes. So it will be repeated. The chapter will be repeated again. So those who have attended those class, you may remember. So how vitamin B complex is also an important factor when it comes to your oral health. In early childhood, dental caries can be prevented if the child is drinking enough water, fluorine-rich water, and not taking excessive calories through sweets and sugary stuff. Okay, just by controlling to uh, controlling to or uh, control the amount of sugars or sweets or chocolates you give to the child, and encourage more uh, more water intake to the child, that is more than enough to regulate the dental cal cal uh, ca uh, caries in children. So, uh, sugars and acids. Sugary food and acidic food are the most common cause causations of dental caries among children. And even if it is the if a beverage, uh, if a drinking beverage or something, if it is sugar free, if it is acidic in nature, it can lead to tooth enamel demineralization. Inadequate calcium intake, inadequate phosphorus intake, uh, vitamin D deficiency, these all are associated with demineralization of bones, specifically the bone that uh, that is present in the, the jaw bone that, supposed to, uh, that is supposed to support your teeth, okay, demineralization of that takes place, so uh, that could lead to some periodontal diseases, increased risk of tooth loss, okay. Nutrient that influence the D, uh, uh, some junk genetic con uh, conditions that are associated with oral health, that is vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acid. They also have potential oral health effects, not proven yet, potential for oral health effects. Next, coming to bone health. The nutrition energy, uh, nutrition, whatever you eat per day, it has macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay, under micronutrients comes your calcium and phosphorus, and by all the vitamins required for bone health as well. Okay, so um, it uh, energy is directly com uh, it is directly related to the body compo composition. How tall you are, how much muscle ma mass you have, how, what is the fat composition, your weight, okay, your age, all these factors will decide how much uh, per day kilocalories you should be taking. And along with that, your physical activity, okay, uh, whatever your weight is and whatever physical activity you maintain on a daily basis, that is related to the amount, amount of energy you should be taking. Okay, if there is any imbalance or disbalance between this equation, that's when people suffer from weight related issues, underweight or overweight both. Both are an imbalance between your energy intake and your body composition and physical activity. So 
uh, and once the body composition and physical activity is known and uh, if you're uh, adequately uh, taking the calories and micronutrients and micronutrients according to your body composition your bone mass will be will remain pretty much the same you will not lose out on bone mass but if there is any negative aspect taking place in this equation your bone mass is also affected okay apart from that this is the nutrient part apart from that aging population hormonal imbalances okay specifically parathyroid hormone and uh, 25 or vitamin d hormone okay uh, the, uh, 25 ohd this is a uh, this is the derivative of vitamin d okay vitamin d acts like an hormone within your body so this is the form in which the vitamin d acts like a hormone okay so aging and these hormones also play an important role in determining your bone mass okay bone mass it, it usually means the, how mineralized your bone is how dense what is the bone density okay so these are the factors that affect your bone mass in general so 90 percent of adult bone mass is in place by the end of your adolescence by the age of 19 and 20 90 percent of your bone mass uh, bone is mineralized okay what you have to do next is to maintain this mineralization not go into a stage of calcium deficiency phosphorus deficiency or vitamin d deficiency which could lead to deteriorating bone mass by the age of 19 20 90 percent of your bone mass bone mineralization is has taken place so deficiencies certain deficiencies that lead to bone related disorders it is on page number 419 table 23.1 so in case of vitamin d deficiency in kids you will see rickets if it is an adult you will see osteomalacian malacia uh, and uh, idiopathic hypercalcemia in, in uh, idiopathic means unknown okay idiopathy is a medical terminology used to uh, state whatever if, if the reason is unknown yet okay it's not understood yet we use the uh, term as idiopathy okay it's a medical terminology usually used in medical books and all those who are not from a healthcare background for them okay if too much of vitamin d is taken it could it, it would lead to hypercalcemia in infants So calcium is a mineral that is essential for both building bones and keeping them healthy. Even if you have attained 90% of the bone mineralization, if your calcium intake decreases over a period of time, the bone mineral demineralization also starts very soon. And bone is a reservoir and at the main source of calcium to maintain constant con uh, concentration of calcium in the blood. As soon as the con uh, calcium concentration in the blood drops, it takes up from the bo uh, bone to maintain that level, calcium, healthy calcium levels in blood. And not just in blood, but muscles and your intracellular fluid also. Calcium, healthy calcium, um, uh, healthy ca calcium serum levels have to be maintained. In muscles, why? Calcium ions lead to contraction, okay? Calcium ion leads to contraction of muscles. And also the, the continuous state of bone remodeling takes place. Okay, even if you are a full grown adult in 30s, 40s, 50s, okay, remodeling, bone remodeling is something that is very continuous. When we will take the chapter on calcium and vitamin D, in, de in detail, we will discuss about this uh, bone, uh, bone remodeling uh, process. So uh, it means that how much of our demineralization takes place okay you cannot always contain uh, you cannot always uh, contain the amount or or maintain the amount of calcium levels in the blood but whenever the calcium level drops from the blood your bone being the source of calcium the uh, blood will take up the calcium minerals from the bone so there is an emptying of the calcium minerals from that matrix okay so it has to be remodeled it has to be continuously remodeled otherwise if it if it continues to be uh, if the body system continues to dig out maximum amount of the bo uh, bone minerals from the bone okay it could it would it would lead to brittle bones it will lead to osteoporosis osteomalacia and such conditions okay 
So to avoid that, re uh, bone remodeling is a natural phenomenon in which continuously, even though the calcium minerals are leaving your bone, more calcium minerals are getting back, osteoblasts are functioning and more cal calcium minerals are getting back and being deposited in your bone. So this is a very continuous process. Even if you're a full grown adult, this takes place on a regular basis in your body. That is bone remodeling. So bone pan formation exceeds reabsorption in the periods of growth such as childhood. Bone formation is quite high, but uh, it is relatively equal during early and middle, uh, middle uh, adulthood and slowly in aging adults, it low, lows down. Okay, bone resorption, it, uh, it decreases. Okay. Vitamin D is also uh, essential for bone health. It promotes the calcium absorption in diet. Okay, when vitamin D and calcium rich diet are taken together, uh, it uh, it promo promotes each other's absorption. Calcium promotes vitamin D's absorption. Vitamin D will pro promote calcium's absorption. And that's how it, uh, we can maintain adequate serum, calcium and phosphate concentration with the presence of vitamin D. And even in, in the deficiency of vitamin D, bones can become soft, which is what, what we call as osteomalacia. Homocysteinuria is, a, uh, see, homocysteine is a specific kind of protein, okay? It should be found in your blood uh, when, uh, the, the, when the body is not able to or process this protein or amino acid homocysteine is an amino acid so too much of amino uh, so too much of this uh, amino acid methionine will be released from out of your body through urine okay so that is homocysteinuria homocysteine homocysteine is a protein amino acid which is found in the blood And some studies have also suggested that vitamin C, magnesium, vitamin K as well. These are the other rele relevant uh, minerals, uh, sorry, vitamins, are, which are supposed to protect your body against osteoporosis. And if you do not have enough amount of vitamin K, there, there have been seen an association with low bone mineral density and increased incidence of fracture. If your bone density falls down, there is a high chance of you getting fractured. But always remember this thing when it comes to evidence-based medical practices, uh, association is not always a causation. Association is not always causation. Okay, you, you will find various different associations when it comes to a disease con condition. St when studies are done, okay, uh, X, Y, Z, these many things are associated with uh, this particular disease condition. Okay, you will get a lot of association, but it always does not mean these associations are the reason why you got this disease. Okay, so always remember this statement of association is not causation. Okay, when it comes to any studies that are going on, uh, re relevant irrelevant studies. Okay, minor uh, minor uh, notes what have what the, what the studies have found. Uh, it, uh, wherever you read something, okay, don't take it by its own. Uh, always un understand that this is just one study among the plethora of studies that have been conducted, and we do not know for sure yet. Okay, even though vitamin K is linked, when we say the word, it is linked to low bone density. It doesn't mean vitamin K deficiency will lead to low bone density. There should be other factors as well that supports the uh, low bone density, okay? So is it clear about bone health and what are the important factors in nutrition one has to know about bone health? Is it clear about bone health? In detail about bone health, about, uh, not just bone health, calcium and uh, when it comes to calcium notes and uh, vitamin D, when these chapters will be taken, in detail we will discuss about the different types of disease conditions associated with bone health and these, disease, uh, and these 
micro minerals, mi micro vitamins. Next is eye health. So just a snapshot of the uh, key nutri nutrients that are supposed to protect your eye health. First and the foremost is your vitamin A. Okay, plant-based or animal-based vitamin A. Plant-based, if it is a plant-based diet, your main source of vitamin A is going to be beta-carotene. Okay, active form of vitamin A directly you can get from any animal-based diet. Eggs, carrots, spinach, okay. Uh, liver, if it when it comes to organ uh, organ meat like liver, they are uh, good sources of vitamin A. Vitamin C, broccoli, oranges, berries, any citrus uh, citrus fruits and vegetables like capsicum and all, really good source of vitamin C. Vitamin E, all your nuts and seeds, all nuts and seeds, oil containing nuts and seeds are good uh, source of vitamin E. Lutein and zeaxanthin, eggs, yolks and kale. If you do not find kale, kale is kind of a green leafy vegetable found uh, in international markets usually. But in every other city and town in India, you will not find kale. But we also have the substitute of kale. Local substitutes of kale are amaranth uh, leaves and uh, spinach, dark green vegetables and uh, dark green leafy veget uh, vegetables. These are the good substitute of kale as well. Zinc is found in beef, beans, nuts, cereals, oysters, seafood, red meat, all your uh, legumes and pulses are good sources of zinc. Essential fatty acids in all your seafood along with that flax seeds for vegetarians flax seeds. So these are the key nutrients which are very important for your ocular health or eye health. For uh, certain uh, uh, Eye, uh, eye disorders which are very common. Cataract is common among uh, senior citizens. Okay, in which uh, what happens is that cloudiness happens uh, forms in in your eye lens because of which UV radiation or any light cannot pass through the eye lens and form a clear um, picture in the retina. Okay, so cloudiness is there because uh, in in the in this this is condition called cataract, and antioxidants can prevent the susceptibility of people getting cataract. If your diet is antioxidant rich, there are low chance of you suffering from cataract. Macular degeneration. So macula is a small area uh, in your retina. Retina is the area, is the part of your eye in which images are formed. Okay. Retina has rod cells and corn cells. Rods and cons. Okay. So these corn cells are responsible for you detecting colors okay you if you look at look at something and you can identify the color it's because of the corn cells rod cells are the reason why you can see which area is dim which is a well lit area okay the difference between dark areas light areas okay that is the reason that you can you can understand that because of rod cells okay so the retina is made up of rod cells and corn cells so macula is a light sensitive layer uh, and it is in the uh, it, it is a small part of your retina in the inner surface uh, inner surface of the back of the eye so whatever photo uh, receptors the, that is the rod cells that are responsible for clear vision for that for the health of that lutein and cyanthin uh, is important they act as an antioxidant they protect your eye from environmental damage which is caused by pollutants sun exposure, smoking, okay? And lutein and cyanthin is also, as I mentioned, found in dark green leafy vegetables. On screen, it is given only kale, but every other dark green leafy vegetables are good source of lutein and zeaxanthin. Zinc is also an important role, plays an important role in bringing vitamin A from the liver to the retina for the transport of uh, vitamin A from the liver to the retina and to produce melanin that is going to support, protect your eye. So food sources rich in zinc are, we have seen red meat, all forms of red meat, seafood, poultry, it is found in small amounts in poultry as well, pork, oysters, egg, nuts. Uh, if, if you are a vegan, tofu, baked beans, wheat germ, okay, they all are good sources of zinc. All your, all your pulses and legumes are, by default, good sources of zinc. 
vitamin c is an antioxidant it will it will definitely support your eye tissues from uh, antioxidant uh, free radical damage vitamin e again it's an antioxidant for eye it can protect your eyes from environmental damage omega 3 fatty acid can support your eye health by preventing plaque built up in within your uh, eye that and it can reduce the inflammation and if vitamin a is not adequately found in your diet supplementation can be taken of beta carotene vitamin e Z, c zinc copper okay multivitamin supplement can be taken it can also re reduce your risk of macular degeneration Some studies have shown that the adults who follow Mediterranean diet, it is very difficult to follow in India. Please, please uh, see, check to that. Mediterranean diet is very easy to, fo to be fo followed in European countries and all because their major food, the, the major sources of their protein comes from animal-based food, uh, red meat, fish, etc. But it, it is very difficult to keep up a Mediterranean diet in an Indian house household because when, when we talk about a Mediterranean diet, majority of uh, of their plating, they have a lot of salads, lots of raw vegetables, fruits, green, uh, green, green leaves, crunchy green leaves, etc. These are the major uh, major setting in a Mediterranean plate, okay? Which is complete opposite of what we see in a basic Indian diet, okay? we uh, In India, we are carbohydrate forward diet, okay? Even if you take any thali or any Indian cuisine, okay, from north to south, east to west whatever whichever region you go okay one thing common in all the cuisines in india is that it is a carbohydrate forward food okay next is fat and then it is protein we uh the, the kind of diet which we have in india is kind is usually uh, lacking in protein to a great great extent as compared to other countries so mediterranean diet to follow that in india it's very difficult okay but there is a uh, this is a study international level studies when they have done there is a low risk of people who follow Mediterranean diet they already have high omega three fatty acid because seafood is a very important aspect of a Mediterranean diet so they naturally have a lower risk of developing macular degenerations or any eye related problems nutritional problems that affects eye is very rare in Mediterranean diet through Mediterranean diet. So that's about the important key factors about eye health. Is it clear to all? Next is your skin health. The first is your essential fatty acid, omega-3 fatty acid. Through uh, the source, the main source again, seafood, fish liver oils, cod livers, freshwater fishes like salmon. Okay, uh, sea fishes are also really good source of uh, omega three fatty acids. Sardines, sardines are very commonly used in India. Sardines, mackerels, uh, tuna. Okay, kingfish. These are really uh, these are the, uh, even the hilsa fish and all. Okay, these are really good sources of essential fatty acid. For vegetarians, it's flax seeds. Okay, other nuts and seeds are also good sources of vitamin C, uh, essential fatty acid. So how does uh, essential fatty acid in, uh, uh, help in your skin health? It increases the epidermal permeability and uh, and trans epidermal water, uh, water loss. Okay, if, if there is a deficiency in omega-3 fatty acid, you will have a dehydrated skin. Okay, if the, uh, the there is a thin barrier on uh, on your skin, okay, which is a healthy lipid barrier, okay, this health for this healthy lipid barrier, essential fatty acid should be there in the diet. Okay, lipid barrier means what? It's a oil based barrier. Usually, your sebum, the the sebum that the skin secretes. Okay, uh, if you see water, uh, if you mix water and oil, what will sit on top? If you mix water and oil, what what will sit on top? It's the oil that sits on top, okay? So your sebum secretion that takes place, sebum secretion that takes place, okay? Uh, that is that is supposed to sit on top of the skin in such a way that the trans epidermal water loss, that is 
the direct water loss from your skin that can be reduced okay this the sebum that the, the the oil that your skin secretes okay it's uh it creates a barrier in such a way that water is blocked within the skin so that the water loss can be prevented so your skin will not go into the stage of dehydration okay so essential fatty acid is important for a healthy sebum production too much of sebum production will definitely make your skin prone to acne okay and uh, taking away the oil from the from your skin you think your face is getting too oily and you continuously overuse your face washes and all and continuously dry out your skin that will also cause more problem because the skin will think that there is no enough amount of oil it will try to secrete more oil in and it will cause more acne okay then vitamin c it's an antioxidant to even the topical application of vitamin c it can protect your skin from free radical damage it can protect your skin from the sun exposure okay it, it, it does not have a spf vitamin c can protect your can uh, can make sure that your sunscreen works better that is the way how vitamin c and sunscreens work okay uh, so vitamin C will always in diet. Okay, if you apply it on on the top of your skin, it it gives more like an antioxidant uh, protection for your skin. But when you take it in diet, definitely it is an it is a really good antioxidant. But along with that, it can help in your wound healing if you have acne scars or any uh, cuts and bruises. Okay, vitamin uh, enough amount of vitamin C can increase your wound healing it can increase the uh, collagen formation okay so with with the help of collagen formation you can see more plumpness in your skin okay that is the use of vitamin c in uh, nutraceuticals copper again copper is also important for collagen formation and wound healing protein if your diet goes down in protein, you will lose the collagen, you will lose the elastin, and that's how you get you you age faster. If 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 you have a protein low diet, there are high chances that you will age faster. Okay, enough amount of collagen will be broken down. The amino acids from the collagen will be broken down for other functions. Zinc zinc is associated with uh, dry skin. Okay, the deficiency of zinc is associated with dry skin and uh, for wound healing, zinc is important and uh, so to people who suffer from psoriasis, eczema, okay, for them also some zinc supplements is given specifically to heal their wound, to reduce the inflammation. Zinc has anti-inflammatory properties as well. So that's how it, help, it helps in calming down the inflammation, calming down that redness. Okay, psoriasis and eczema, you can see that redness in that skin to calm down that inflammation. Uh, any any nutrient, any, any nutraceuticals rich in zinc or zinc rich food can help. Some topical applications are also available, which is prescribed for psoriasis patients and eczema patients, which, ha which has zinc as a component. Okay. Vitamin A, uh, deficiency of vitamin A can lead to keratinization. Okay, keratinization means the skin becomes so dry and hard. Okay, the, the, you can see in in some severe cases of dehydration or severe cases of cold. Okay, the the uh, skin becomes so dry and flaky that you can actually break the flakes off. You can you not just itch the flake off; you can break the flakes off. That is keratinization. Keratinization means dried and hardening up of the skin. Okay, that is get, uh, so vitamin A deficiency could lead to keratinization because the skin cells turn turnover is not taking place. Okay, every one twenty days and all your skin, uh, the old cells has to shed from your face and new cells, uh, no new, new cells has to emerge from beneath. Okay, vitamin A helps in that cell turn turnover. In in deficiency of vitamin A, the cell turnover is not taking place. The old cells still stay back on your skin and the new cells are not able to emerge back so that's how when the old cells stay back on your skin it becomes dry it becomes flaky it becomes rigid and hard okay so that's 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 how vitamin a is associated with your skin health this is one of the reason why vitamin a applications like you must have heard about 
uh, retinols, retinaldehydes, retinoin, accutane. Okay, so these all accutane, uh, iso uh, and isotretinoin, retinoin topical application, retinaldehyde applic topical application. These all are prescription levels. Okay, the only vitamin A that you can uh, purchase and directly apply on your skin is retinols. Okay, for retinols you do not require prescription, but for other forms of vitamin A topical applications, prescription is required. Okay. And uh, acutane, that is isotretinoin, that is a form of vitamin A, which is taken orally, okay, for treating acute acne, severe ac acne, uh, my, uh, moderate to severe acne, acutane is given, but acutane has a lot of side effects during pregnancy and if you're lactating, you're not supposed to take these retinols or any vitamin A topical applications should not be taken during pregnancy and during lactation. It can cross over and it can uh, lead to toxicity in the baby as well. So avoid vitamin A applications, topical applications or uh, ingesting vitamin A uh, in the form of acute when you are pregnant or lactating. And also there are other serious, serious uh, side effects associated with acute uh, prescription. That is when you are taking high dose of this vitamin A orally, uh, suicide, uh, suicide, suicide attempts, okay, depression suicidal thoughts uh, and severe psychological distress and anxiety. These are associated with this particular prescription. So only under a physician's and under a dermatologist's advice, you can take these prescriptions, okay? Then beta carotene, beta carotene, too much of beta carotene if it is uh, present in your uh, diet, it can change your skin color as well, okay? And uh, your blood levels, uh, in beta carotene levels in your blood can also be toxic. So be very careful about indulging in beta carotene supplements without any prescription or without any general physician's guidance. Gu guidelines. Do not indulge in vitamin A and beta carotene uh, food supplements. Vitamin B complex. B complex is also associated with a lot of skin disorders. Deficiency of B complexes. One is Pellegra. If you remember from the B complex class, Pellegra. Three Ds are there in Pellegra. Dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia. Dementia is not common for everyone who suffers from Pellegra. It could be depression as well. In some cases, it is depression. In some cases, it is dementia. So three Ds are associated with Pellegra. Pellegra is the uh, deficiency of uh, niacin. Okay, that castle's ne ne necklace that is also another form of niacin deficiency seen usually seen in prisoners and inmates. Castle's necklace and a lot of glossitis, dermatitis, ankylosing stomatitis, acne, acne vulgaris. Okay, these all are associated with B complex deficiency. So that, that's about uh, skin health and certain, some essential vitamins and minerals. Is it clear to all? Next is your hair and nail health. In case of severe acute malnutrition, SAM stands for severe acute malnutrition seen in children, okay, uh, in the form of marasmus, kwashiorkor, marasmi kwashiorkor. These are the different types of severe acute malnutrition. So, uh, there, there are hair changes. If you go back to the chapter, you will understand what all uh, symptoms we have discussed. So, hair changes, uh, the pigmentation of the hair decreases. Uh, rapidly specifically in cases of marasmus okay hair changes the hair hair becomes very sparse and coarse okay so so that there is an association with some uh, macro mineral deficiency and how it translates in as a uh, hair loss symptom or hair color symptom then we have menkes disease in menkes disease it's associated with copper okay uh, deficiency of uh, copper leads to Menkes disease. Either the copper is, is there in the diet, but the intestine is not able to 
uh, absorb um, enough amount of copper because copper deficiency or copper toxicity is something that is very rare and it, it both are very rare okay Cop copper toxicity is wilson's disease Cop copper deficiency is menkes disease okay in menkes disease also uh, there is a there is a photo in your text uh, in the textbook when you will go to the chapter of copper you will see that uh, so in menkes disease the color of the hair becomes very rustic brown okay that is hypopigmented hair and sparse hair kinky sparse hair is seen so that is one characteristic in menkes disease then acrodermatitis enteropathica. You can see here the first image given on top. You can, uh, if you can see the uh, rashes on scalp. Okay, these rashes are called acrodermatitis enteropathica because of zinc deficiency. Again, a very rare condition because of the mineral zinc deficiency. Acrodermatitis enteropathica takes place. Hair loss is also seen wherever this rash is seen. A excessive hair loss uh, is seen and the hairs become very sparse and diffuse. If you can see the area where hairs are present, it is still very sparse and very diffuse. Okay, They have to be put on zinc supplements. The patients who have this kind of condition because of zinc de deficiency, they will be put on zinc supplements. Then iron deficiency, chironychia. You can see here spoon-shaped fingernails. The, uh, the fingernails have become spoon-shaped. Iron deficiency could also lead to hair loss. Hair loss is not always related to biotin. Okay, don't go by the marketing of biotin gummies, etc. Biotin gummies, uh, biotin having biotin gummies will solve your hair loss. It is it does not work for everyone. You have to find the root cause of why why you are losing your hair. It could be hormonal. It could be other major deficiencies. Okay, other disease conditions. If it could be the products that you may have changed or used recently, or some allergic reactions. Okay, some autoimmune disorders. In certain autoimmune dis disorders, they will uh, auto these autoimmune disorders will go and attack your hair follicles. Okay, how much of a biotin gummy you take, it is not going to solve the issue. Okay. Vitamin C deficiency could also lead to enlargement and keratosis of hair follicles, specifically of the upper arm, arms, uh, in, in which the hair follicles, it, it feels, you can feel like small, uh, small little pokes that are poking out of your upper arm, okay? That is the keratosis of your hair follicles, hardening and drying up the hair follicles. It will feel very pokey, specifically on the upper arms. Vitamin A toxicity can disturb your hair loss and access of vitamin A can also lead to hair loss. So whenever you are uh, suffering from severe hair loss, okay, hair, uh, hair loss is, is again still a cycle. Uh, there, is a, there, is a, there are different phases of hair growth, hair maintenance and hair loss. Okay, Every strand of hair is uh, on your scalp is in different phases. That is the science behind it. Okay, when usually when the hair uh, when the hair is in a tallow phase, that's when the hair falls down, sheds sheds from your uh, from your scalp. Okay, but uh, when uh, when you have invested good in good nutrients and in, and in good diet, majority of the hair follicles will be in the growth phase or in the maintenance phase. As soon as your diet comes down or as soon as your habit comes down of maintaining good diet and if the telophase of certain hair follicles start, it will activate the telophase, telophase for majority of the hair follicles as well in case of deficiencies. Okay, that's how you see severe hair loss in certain phases of your life. In, in every three years or every three and a half years, every month one must have go, gone through a, a phase of hair loss. Okay, so that, so that is something very natural. It happens to majority of, uh, of us. So it should not be worried. Okay, uh, it's just a hair shedding phase that has come up. Okay. Uh, so you have to first understand is the hair shedding because of the phase that you are in or are you, some people will 
will will face this situation of telophase every two years, every three years. But you have to understand that pattern. When was the last time you faced excessive hair shedding? Okay, if it is around the same time, when the time gap is same, you can understand it's just a phase of your hair. It will grow back. Okay, when the when you have to grow back the hair. Uh, certain uh, home remedies are available. Certain proven, uh, proven evidence based like minositol. Okay, minositol is a, a proven hair uh, um, topical application that uh, that that will induce hair growth. Uh, rosemary oil. Okay, that is that also a, various studies has been done that can uh, induce your hair growth. Rosemary extract or rosemary or, or, or rosemary oil. Okay, so supplements when you are going to take hair supplements. Before that, you have to check your blood, see what all micro deficiencies, major deficiencies you suffer from, okay? Uh, and uh, check your hormones as well. Do a complete endocrinology te panel test. Uh, see how, uh, what, what, which, where you are suffering from, from the hormonal point of view and from the nutritional point of view, where your health is right now. And based on that, you can move forward, okay? Just blindly buy, buying these gummies are not going to solve the issues of hair and nail. So is it clear to all regarding 